the first thing you hear is you have the ProPresenter scoreboard software. And essentially uh, what this software does is it brings in scoring data. It's, uh, it can also be used to score the game too if you don't have the consoles out. And, but its primary thing is it basically controls any content that you load into the system, it controls uh, where it goes. So um, what you can see, uh, it may be a little bit difficult to see on here, but um, what you can have is you can see these different colored areas on the screen. Those are the different zones that are on uh, the system. So basically any of these colored areas, that's basically saying, I want to have content go to a specific area on the board. Um, and those will be labeled on your system, video zone, ad zones, that kind of thing. So you kind of know where to put that content. Um, first off then, to kind of show you if you, the system is closed, to open it up. It'll be the red trophy that's in the center of the screen on the bottom. So that's the, uh, the red trophy here. That is what opens up the uh, software. So you just click onto that red trophy. And that'll open up the system into where basically where it was configured last. So if you're doing a basketball game last, it'll open it up into that configuration. You can kind of see. So, and what you have is you have the user interface for scoring up at the top, uh, which if the consoles are active and running, uh, you won't actually have to worry about that. That'll be controlled by the person operating. Um, over here on the left, you have your preview. So that is what's actually being displayed up on the board. Then uh, you have uh, kind of your graphics area below. And this is where you will have um, all of your content that you add in for playlists and, uh, and what these, uh, each of these sections is called is a playlist. Um, so what you do is you through those playlists and through choosing which area of the board on uh, you want that content to go, that's how you basically will run your effect. So, um, and the graphics bin, that's where you have like animations or if you have like a PSA that you wanted to play or if you have um, any kind of um, ad content, like if you have a 30 second ad that you want to play during a timeout, that's all would be located in your graphics bin um, down here. Um, now, uh, each of these playlists, one thing you'll note th uh, that's uh, kind of consistent throughout the software is plus marks. These plus marks generally denote that you can add something to that list, whether it be to the graphics bin um, or what we'll get, get over here in a moment is to overlays um, and to macros. So anywhere in the content, anywhere in the system, generally the plus mark allows you to add material to that area. Um, any questions about uh, zones themselves? So that's just kind of where things are going on the board. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll kind of go through uh, the graphics area. So the graphics bin is a series of playlists, and uh, those playlists can then be specified to a specific zone. So in this case, um, I've got uh, these videos. Uh, so that's, uh, and those are set to full screen. But again, that's hitting on the plus mark. And then you can say new playlist. Once you say new playlist, it'll ask you to name it and you can just name it um, however you would like. So in this case, I'm just gonna name that test. Um, and then once you've added a playlist, you kind of have a bigger area on your graphics bin. And then what you do is you go into that area and then you hit the plus mark from there and you can load a video or image. Um, what that does is it takes you to the hard drive. So if you need to ever, if you need to load content onto your system, you have these, uh, uh, kind of where your connection point for your monitor, mouse, and keyboard are. There's also a USB uh, port available. So you can take a thumb drive, you put it into the system, and then you put it onto the hard drive, just as you would uh, any normal computer. Once it's on the hard drive for the computer, you then can go in and that's where you'll be able to load it in from here. Um, one thing we always highly recommend is just as long as you have some internal system for organizing and naming your files, um, it's going to make your lives a lot easier. You don't want to have everything end up in one big group like in your downloads folder. So it doesn't matter if, how you do that structure. That can be completely independent per school as long as you have a naming structure for your files as you bring them in. It'll just help you guys out in the long run. 
Um, I've seen also a lot of schools, they'll do it by season. So you'll have all of your videos and files for a particular season or year, and then you'll go in and you'll create a new folder. That way you don't have to have everything jumbled up in the system. Um, so again, uh, we're in the graphics bin, and we've hit the plus mark to add a playlist and named that playlist. And now we've hit the plus mark again to add a, uh, add a file. So you just go in and navigate to a particular file. Oh, and you just select that file and then you choose open. Now what you can do is you can shift and select multiple files. So let's say you have a big folder with a lot of things that you want to add at once. You just sh click the top one, shift, select the bottom, and then add them in. And then once you add them in, they'll load into the system. Now one thing to note, as soon as you load a file, it does not select the zone for you. So if you load a file in and then you go and you're clicking it and it's not playing, it just means you need to tell it where to go. It has to know where, where to go. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit, tell that uh, full screen. And I'm going to click that. And now it's playing uh, full screen on the board. Um, one thing to note, um, what you may have noticed is that initially the scoreboard was displaying on top of it. The scoreboard is always going to be at the top layer. Um, so that all. So if you need something, the scoreboard to go away, there's a, or you need it to come back. Say you do something and the scoreboard goes away. There's a button that specifically says scoreboard down here, and it'll be green or red. So clicking that will then reveal or show the scoreboard. Okay. Say, David. Yes. Um, importing files. If um, since this is Apple software, is yes. it? possible to airdrop things into it? So, no? um, so the uh, depends on where your rack is located. Uh, typically, all the racks are located mm -hmm. kind of in a closet in the back. So the airdrop may not work unless you're sitting um, where that rack is. Um, but that's a good question. It's a great question. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, um, on the system, you have your scoreboard. You have your scoreboard layer uh, um, and your graphics layer. And then one thing we'll get to in here in just a moment is your overlays. What you'll see is across the top, you have buttons for clearing each of these in, uh, each of these items. So I've put this graphic up. It's covered up um, kind of the base layer that I had. So if I hit clear graphics, it'll return to that screen. So this screen right here, uh, uh, what's kind of going on? is this is advertisements. So what you can do is have ad zones. And in this case, there are, we've set up uh, just a, as a demonstration, we've set up three ad zones on each side and also an ad zone in the middle. Um, you can actually take uh, one ad zone and use it for video. We don't recommend going and trying to put videos in all of your ad zones because then it just kind of gets a little, it gets a little much to be to looking at. Um, so in that, so everything, and one thing to note, in terms of uh, what we'll kind of go through is uh, now that we've kind of gone through zones and how to add content in, um, edit it, the editing process um, for any area in the system is generally a pencil icon. It's just a slash pencil with kind of an underscore, like a pencil writing on a piece of paper. So that's kind of your editing area. So uh, in here, we're going to the pencil area. And what this said is you have uh, four areas here. It's your settings. Your settings area is where you kind of um, uh, change your scoreboard settings. Uh, it's where you do your initial horn setup, and it's also where you can go in and change and edit how the scoreboard looks, whether it be font, colors, all of that stuff. That's where this process will take place. Um, zones, we kind of touched on a, mom uh, on a moment. Uh, this is kind of where you create areas on the scoreboard for you to say, okay, I want to have upper three-fourths. So if you just wanted to have a zone that was just above the scoreboard and encompass that whole area, this is where you would set it up. Each of your systems has zones preloaded for you. So those zones are kind of uh, set up, but they can be changed. So if you guys go forward and you're, you're, uh, you're using your systems and you're like, well, this is nice, but I really would like it if it were different, uh, this is how you can change and manipulate that setup. Um, Advertisements. Um, advertisements are similar to the graphics bin, but what it's doing is it's looking at a folder on the hard drive. And you just load that folder up with static advertisements, and you say, here's the, you tell the computer um, which folder to go to and which ads area to go to. 
and it just basically reads through that folder in a list. Um, this is something that uh, for a game day environment, it should already be set up. You wouldn't really have to worry about. This would be something more in kind of the configuration stage. Uh, and it just, uh, when what we've done is we typically put all, our, um, all the advertisers in every zone and then you should, uh, adjust how they're read in the list and that's how you kind of get them parading through and around the board in the ad zones. Um, and you can set the duration. So right now these are set to change every 10 seconds. So every 10 <coughs> seconds the ads change um, and that also can be um, with the, the video zone too. If you just wanted a vid one video to stay in the middle, right now we have a couple of videos in that big zone in the center. Um, if you wanted to have a couple of, uh, if you just have, want to have one video, you can set that one video to a really long duration, like 72 hours. So that way you just have one video that's static in the center there. Now, any questions about um, advertisements <coughs> in terms of how that loads in? All right, so um, again, advertisements, that is just uh, basically saying, I want to add an advertisement. Again, that plus mark is pretty universal through the software for adding stuff to it. You hit the plus mark and you say, this is my folder. And we've actually set up a series of folders on your systems that say ads for them. And then you uh, go to that folder and say, this is my file. Log. One thing I would recommend is if you are going through and editing your advertisers, you're removing a lot of stuff and adding things, I would close down the software first, get all of your advertisers loaded into the right folder, and then open up the software from there. Um, now macros, <coughs> what a macro allows you to do, it kind of uh, combines uh, what we're doing in the graphics bin with zones. Now before, when you saw, uh, when I pulled that, played that full screen video, I had to turn off the scoreboard. What a macro does is say, hey, I want to do a couple clicks with just one click. So that what you can do is let's say you had a advertiser during a timeout that you wanted to be full screen. You basically say, uh, you, add this, you add a macro, and then what it has on the side is actions. You say, I want it to do this at the beginning of the macro. I want it to play to this zone, or I want it to clear this content. And then at the end, I want it to go away. So in this case, I have this, uh, what I've done for an example is the national anthem. So, and I've told it to, when I click it, I say, I want you to clear off the scoreboard because the scoreboard's on top of your graphics. And then I want you to play full screen. And in this case, I can say, I want you to go away after um, five seconds. So, and then um, what you can also do is say, at the end, I want you to show the scoreboard again. So that way it, plays the video for a few seconds, clears the scoreboard, and then goes back to it. That way you don't have to worry about, if you wanted to play a video full screen real quickly, you don't have to worry about clicking a bunch of things at once. <coughs> so in this case, what we'll do, kind of show that. So you see, I put one, did with one click, it puts up the video for a few seconds, and now it goes away, and it gets, us, gets, gets you back to where you were before. So then that's kind of uh, the use for a macro. Um, that's good for like, you know, a big event, uh, like something, you know, you want to do a make some noise or if you have an advertiser that you want to have full screen, anything where you're using, like when you're clicking a bunch of stuff at once, it allows you to take one piece of content and may not have to do all of those clicks. So that's kind of a, a, what a macro does for you. Um, any questions? Yes. So not the average, your advertiser folder ever goes into your shut the whole system down, that's correct. So what you want, want to do is you just want, if you end up in that situation, rather than open, trying to reopen the software, you would put in, uh, a file, just a, any kind of still image, into that folder and reopen the software. You don't want to have the advertiser folder in. Typically it's okay, but it can, uh, it can cause the, the system to get upset. Um, any questions regarding uh, uh, macros? So when you create your macro, mm -hmm. do you have to go in and identify that you want it to you know, cover the whole screen? How do you set the time? How long do you want that to be on there? Yeah, so what you have when you add the, well, when you go to the macro area, so again, that's to the pencil at the top. Then I go to the macro section. Um, and then you can hit the plus mark below. 
And then from there, I can, uh, you can take content from your graphics bin and drag and drop it onto the macro. And then over here on the left hand side, so on the right hand side here, you actually, this is where it basically goes from top to bottom, the okay. different actions that you take. And it's kind of the order that they take too. Um, so what do I want to happen first? Do I want to clear the scoreboard? Do I want to clear the overlays? Do I want to clear gra uh, my graphics? Or do I want to clear my ads? So it basically says, what actions do you want to take at the start? How long, do you, where do you want it to happen? How long do you want it to happen for? Uh, if you put it to zero seconds, it'll loop. So instead of turning into a click, one click button, it'll turn into a toggle. So you say, click it on, click it off. Um, and then you basically say, uh, do I want to do any other actions? Like in this case, do I want to show the scoreboard? So that's important. So let's say um, instead of full screen, I had that video content playing just on the top. Uh, well, I want to make sure that it shows the scoreboard at that case. That way I don't end up with a black bar across the bottom. So you can tell it, hey, show, since this is not playing full screen, make sure you're showing the scoreboard. Um, and then at the end, it can basically say, uh, take these actions, and then at the very end, when it's done, um, it allows you to, uh, to show the scoreboard again. And that's the only end behavior that it has. It's saying, basically, once you're done playing this video, do you want me to put the scoreboard back up? Okay. All right, and kind of uh, um, the next area we'll go over is overlays. Um, so overlays are uh, just like kind of they sound. Uh, they go on top of everything. Um, and they can be customized um, however you want uh, with different content. In this case, um, I have uh, three overlays that are preset on this system. Uh, one of them is uh, player file points. So I just click that up and uh, it's overlays over the screen in that area and shows uh, player files and points. Uh, what I've also done is you can add uh, video to this area. So what I've done is uh, I've got a live video coming in from the vMix system, and with that overlay, it then displays on the board. Um, and I have also have one more that allows me to change that and put that up to the upper three floors. So um, that's just kind of, uh, overlays can also be used if you need to create like a quick message. So you need to type out, say like somebody's lights are on or something like that. An overlay uh, would be how you would accomplish that. Um, what we'll do is we'll kind of go into editing scoreboard template. The system for editing the scoreboard template um, is very similar to how you edit an overlay. So kind of the tools that you use in the edit scoreboard area are the same tools that you would use in editing an overlay. Um, and, and again, for uh, clearing this content, after I've clicked any of these buttons, I have a series of buttons across the top here that allow me to clear particular elements of the scoreboard. So whether it be the graphics or the overlay or the advertisements. Um, and then in the center, you have the ability to bring those pieces of content back. The one that's different is the scoreboard, which has its own button, again, down uh, towards the bottom. Um, any uh, Before we go to editing overlays, any questions about kind of what they are and what they're being used for? So an overlay primarily would be for, um, uh, what we primarily use it for is video. So if you want to put video in a certain area of the board, but what you can also use it for is if you wanted to add content on the fly. We always recommend as much as you can to pre-make your content, but it, so like I said, the example of you needed to have a message put quickly up on the board, you could type out a message and say, um, you know, uh, I use, I just typically use it as the, you know, someone has a, a car with their lights on in the parking lot, or if you needed to type something out, an overlay would allow you to put that into the system and then display it up on the board. So there's, yeah, there's two uses for the, uh, real two big uses for the videos. One to overlay content. So uh, in this case, uh, in this, like you see here, the uh, um, player file points, instead of player file points, that could be a typed out text message somewhere on the system. It just allows you to edit it. Um, and then it also, but it allows you to add a video element as well. 
So that's kind of the two big uses for an overlay is um, adding kind of ele uh, text elements and graphic elements to it, uh, to the system, or adding a video element to the system. Uh, so if you wanted to create one on the fly, David, how do you do that? All right, so um, what we'll do, yeah, so we'll go to overlays and then the, what we talk about overlays will apply to scoreboards. So again, one thing that's pretty consistent through the system is there's the pencil icon. So in your overlay section, what you'll see is there's a pencil icon on the overlay. You click that pencil and it'll bring up your slides on the left. And so what you're doing when you're building out a slide, you're building out a slide that displays to the entire display of your scoreboard. Um, for, for Winnetonka, that'll just, this area represents the whole, uh, the whole scoreboard here and here. Um, for uh, Staley uh, and North Kansas City and um, Oak Park, that represents both your display on your big board and also on your little board. So uh, by editing in here, it allows you to display content uh, uh, on either of the scoreboards. So uh, the, to edit that, you just, uh, as you can see up in the top here, you have kind of uh, icons that allow you to add text elements, they allow you to add pictures and, that, and those sort of things, and also live video. Uh, one thing is, you can kind of see, uh, you may be able to see, it, it's very similar to editing a PowerPoint slide. You just add content to it, and then you can adjust and manipulate that content. So you have the ability to add elements on the top, and then manipulating those elements is gonna be on the, uh, on the uh, right hand side. That's gonna be where you change um, how big something is, what font it uses, and where it appears on the screen as well. So what does So for, for here, these, uh, these screens are, being, are mirroring. Um, you, wouldn't, uh, you can actually have multiple overlays, but uh, typically what you would do is you'd have one overlay and you would say, I want this content to be here. Because uh, the way it works on the other sites is uh, you have a big board area and then you have kind of where the smaller board is. And where you just put that content on the overlay is where it's going to display. Does that answer? Does that For a, for a video content, yes, you can't you can't split that up. So it's uh, it's when you click a graphic or anything like that, you're putting it on one board at a time. Or in this case, since these are uh, duplicating each other, any content that shows up is showing up on both boards. Again, so uh, for overlays, again, that's you have your ability to add elements at the top, and then the ability to manipulate those elements on the right. So whether it be sizing, font, color. Um, in the same way that you edit a slide on overlay, um, again, to add a slide, consistent kind of through the software is that plus mark. Um, and what you can also do, one thing to note is when you're working on an overlay, if you hit the show button, the show button will let you take a look at how it's displaying on the screen. So you can change something, you hit the show button, you go, okay, I like that, I don't like that. So in this case, um, let's say if I moved uh, this element, and hit show. So I've got a zero sitting over on the far right side. I'm like, well, that's not where I want it to go. So you can, what I'm doing too is I'm holding shift and moving elements. So when you shift move something, it moves at a set amount. And what that does is it lets you say you needed to move something out of the way. Let's say you had something on a top layer and you want, you're like, well, I need to really work on the color below these letters. You hit shift and you can move something away a set amount and then you can move it back. That way you can put something precisely where you want it. And again, that's. And then again, I hit show again. And now it's displaying uh, with the update. Now, the same way that you edit a slide for your overlay, you can also go to the pencil up at the top. 
you go to your settings, and then you go to edit scoreboard. And in here, this is where it allows you to um, change and manipulate the scoreboard. And in the same, in a very similar fashion, how you have abilities to add elements at the top. Typically, for a scoreboard, it would be just text and color boxes, that sort of thing. Um, you can add uh, image files. So let's say you wanted a picture of your logo for each team. You can add a picture on each side. It just it depends on how you want to set up your system. Um, So for here, if I wanted to uh, go here and change this color, <coughs> so I can select an element, and then on the, on the, again, on the right, you have different tabs for adjusting uh, the properties here. So I can change that color, and so if, I have, if I'm happy with how that color is, then I hit show, and then it updates on the board as you're, as you're making it. I always recommend just as you're working on it, just hit the show every now and then, just to take a, take a look and see what you're working on. It just kind of helps you take a gander at it. Is there an undo function? Yes. <laughs> That's actually an excellent point. I was point. getting ready to ask you, <laughs> okay. if, if that scoreboard ever gets deleted, how, we don't have to rebuild that whole thing, do we? So what we do is we will typically put one um, off to the side okay. that, uh, that you can access. What I would highly recommend is whenever you are working on the scoreboard, you can always take that top slide or even an overlay. Let's say, okay, I'm gonna make some changes and see how they look. You can right click, you can copy, and then you right click again and paste, and it'll paste a copy of that scoreboard uh, directly below it. So you can make a copy and work off of that copy. And then once you're happy with it, then you can uh, go ahead and just uh, delete the original if you want, or leave it there. Just so that's one way. You always, I would recommend working off of a copy. That way, you're not uh, manipulating the scoreboard. And <clears throat> and then for deleting, it's just right click and delete. So uh, that's actually an excellent point. I would always work off of a copy when you're man manipulating the scoreboard. That way, if you get too far gone, you're like, "Ooh, I don't like where I ended up." You can always go back to what you have, what you had before. Um, any questions in regards with kind of editing slides, which is kind of, it applies to both overlays and, and for us, uh, scoreboards. Yes? I'd like to do a scenario. So say you put on a wrestling tournament. Mm -hmm. So for the, so for this facility, it's duplicating. Um, but what you would do is you just set your zones. So your scoreboard would be set up for, um, you set up your score maybe on your aux board uh, at, the, uh, at your facility, your smaller aux board. You basically say, I want to have the scoreboard here, and then I set up my, your overlay, and you say, this overlay will go into the video zone area. The way you do it is your, your zones are laid out in, uh, when you go to that zone area, it shows you exactly the sizing and location of each zone. <coughs> So when you edit an overlay and you add your video element, you duplicate those settings. So it's a small board with the track wrestling. Mm -hmm. And on the big board, you do your live feed. Yes. And Correct. It, or if you wanted to do it vice versa, if you wanted to do it the other way around, you could. You could have live video on the smaller board and more information on the bigger board. Can you? Can you split the boards to be able to, like, we had two mats and we do two different scores for each mat? Is that so? The, the way, uh, so uh, with the scoring, uh, the scoring system, you'd have to go into something like basketball or hockey or something like. There's not a wrestling uh, scoreboard in the system, uh, and then you just say, okay, I'm going to use fouls for mat one, and I'm going to use home and visitor score for mat two, oh, and then you can actually you just manipulate the scoreboard slide. Is that coming off of one controller, though? That'd be off of one controller. You can do it right off the screen. We did it last night. Yeah. You don't have blood time. So that's something that uh, I'm very excited uh, laying out for the equipment to have maybe next year a wrestling template yeah. built. Can you manipulate those values on the screen as well as the as yeah. controller? Yes, absolutely. So, so one person be using the controller to control 
So when the console is connected and on, it'll overwrite any information. So if I hit, that's way, that way if somebody hit, accidentally hits plus one point, but they're scoring over here, the console is always the, the final authority on it. Is that value specific or is that? I'll have to, uh, we'll look into that. We'll look and see if there's a way to maybe parse it out a little bit, but typically the way it works is the console is the kind of overrides anything that's going on your user interface. Correct. Right. Correct. And going back to that track wrestling, one thing about doing track wrestling has up and bounce, so the refresh rate, track wrestling is a website, and you create a tournament within it is a play. Yep, yep. So there is the ability to pull up the website and the software. Yeah. We'll just need to we'll need to get an example link to that website. Um, and make sure that the software is able to load it up. Because sometimes if there's a different, uh, if the website's written in a certain way, yeah. the software may not like it. Yeah. So it just it depends on us loading up that uh, website and taking a look at it. But um, there's also the ability on the, what we'll do is we'll go over some of that on the vMix software as well. The vMix can actually pull up the website as well. So if you're coming from the VMix, that's one that's one video key okay, going so into the system. Correct. And that's something we'll, 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 we'll work with you on this on the specific scenarios and how to best execute. Okay. Because with with any of these softwares, the, the, there's uh, three or four different ways to accomplish a task. At the end of the day, it's what works best for you and your facility. So uh, does that help? help? Yeah. Oh. And um, the last, uh, the last thing we'll touch on is kind of live video and how to add that to the system. Uh, typically, since that's coming in from the vMix system, that should be a static uh, setting. Uh, but uh, again, that's in, uh, and this is going to be more of a setup thing, less than, than an operation standpoint. But if you're having an issue with your live video, uh, this kind of would be how you address it as well. Um, in your, uh, so any of these uh, overlay settings here, you click on that element. Uh, one thing that's kind of universal, whether it's a still picture or anything else, anytime you're editing a slide element, you go to the gear wheel, and the gear wheel kind of allows you to uh, take a look at some of the settings. Um, in this case, you can change the source, and on that source, it'll say, uh, the device, which is your Ultra Studio Mini Recorder, and the resolution that it's coming in at. And so the, what you, the thing to do is you want to make sure that whatever resolution the vMix is outputting is what you match up on here. As long as they match, you're fine. Uh -oh. So that's kind of a, a general overview of the software. What I'm going to do, uh, what I'd like to do is go into a little bit more specifics on the graphics bin, but I wanted to see if anybody uh, anybody had any additional questions on anything <coughs> you've touched on so far uh, before I kind of go into more of the finer details with your graphics bin. Is there a priority in terms of scoreboard overlays? Absolutely. So overlays are your very are the top of them. It's overlays, uh, then your scoreboard, then your graphics, and then at the very bottom is your advertising. Mm -hmm. So, your bottom is your advertisement, your graphics are a layer above that, um, then you have your scoreboard, and then at the topmost is your overlay. How many, how many live inputs go through the vMix, and so where the, is that located? So the vMix is located um, uh, typically in your IDF closet, so <coughs> uh, uh, for new schools in an IDF closet, so in Staley. <laughs> North Kansas City. Sorry. Yeah, uh, North Kansas City is in the IDF closet. Uh, the one here is back in the uh, 
where the basically it's wherever your audio rack is. Uh, we're gonna have a small rack there, and there'll be four um, SDI inputs back there for cameras. So if you want to run a wireless system, you just need to get a system that uh, your wireless receiver has a SDI output on it. Um, and uh, like I said, there's four inputs there. All those go to the through the remix, and then via that into score. Yes. So it's and yeah, so it's four inputs into the vMix, and then one output out of that vMix into the scoreboard software. So over at Oak Park, it, your um, audio rack's right in that hallway. We're gonna be mounting our rack right above that, and that's where your inputs will be. Um, any other questions? Where does it tell you what resolution it's coming out at? Do they have a match? Yeah. So what you'll see is um, on VMix, and we'll go in a little bit more to it when we go specifically on the software, the bottom left-hand corner okay. in green letters will tell you what the resolution is. <coughs> and again, that's technically something you shouldn't have to manipulate, but you know sometimes the setting will get changed, and it's, you got to know how to get back to it. Um, so in your graphics bin, when you add content to it, uh, there's a couple of ways you can manipulate that content. You can change how it scales. You can change whether or not it has audio. So if it's, let's say you have a, uh, let's say you had the national anthem, but you had someone singing and performing in the auditorium, you wouldn't want the national anthem video to play with sound. To access any of those items, you just right click. And for, from here, you can change um, how that item plays. Typically for video, uh, for video content, you'll either have it on uh, loop, which will continuously play it, or stop, which means it'll get to the end and stop, which is great for an advertisement. Say you have an advertisement that ends uh, with a phone number or a website. You put it on stop, it'll play to the end of it, and then stop at the end of that advertisement. Um, and loop, just kind of as it sounds, um, as you click that, it'll then loop. So in this case, we have these, uh, these icons set to the video zone. And what I'm doing here to adjust the graphics bin, if you just highlight across the gray area, it allows you to uh, shift how big or small the uh, graphics bin is. So again, just left clicking one of those icons, it'll then uh, loop. And we, all, we have a series of animations, of stock animations that are loaded onto each system. Now, if you right click these, uh, if you right click and then go to media properties, media properties is kind of where you can go through and uh, look at the video. And let's say, again, for the example of the national anthem, if you wanted to turn down the volume for it, uh, you could do that. You would do that there. Um, you also have the ability to uh, change scaling. So let's say you wanted to do a, uh, a series of uh, still image slideshow. Let's say you had a senior night or something and you had a bunch of pictures up on the board and some of them are wide and some of them are big. Uh, you can actually change the way they scale uh, through this system. There are kind of three ways to scale, uh, scale something. You can either go scale to fit, which will put black bars on the side or black bars across the top. It'll basically say, Display the whole content, but make it fit to wherever I put it. Uh, scale to fill, which basically says I want to uh, expand the image to fill up the area without distorting it. So let's say you had a, a skinny picture of, of, of two people standing next to each other and you want it to be not stretched, you would do scale to fit. That would then show you, that would zoom in on, on that picture. Uh, and then stretch to fill is as it sounds. If you just want to take, you want to make sure all that content displays, you just stretches it to the zone. Um, typically, we recommend for any kind of video content for the board, it's just kind of standard uh, video uh, resolution, uh, 16 by nine. And then uh, that will just kind of, uh, and you can set that to stretch to fill for your video zone. So even though it may be a couple pixels different than, than uh, uh, the perfect aspect ratio, it'll still let you uh, display it. Um, any questions about uh, the scaling function or where you would want to use them one way or the other? Okay. Um, and again, in, 
And in the uh, property section, you have a volume slider, as we kind of talked about before. That volume slider, that's, that volume slider is how you would uh, change the volume on a content. And one thing to know with overlays, if you change the audio properties here in the graphics bin, when you drag it up to your macro, it'll, um, it'll, take the, it'll keep those settings. So let's say you wanted to have the national anthem with no audio, you turn off the audio in your graphics bin, and then you drag it up to that macro at the top. So that way when you click it, it won't play with audio. Um, the other thing that you can do um, in this area, let's say you have a video that's given to you that has uh, 20 seconds of black video on the front of it. You can actually change uh, the in and out point um, through this system. You can just set the in and set the out point so you play just the part of the video that you want. Our recommendation though is to always try to have the video prepped and ready for how you want it to see it when you display it. But we, as we know, sometimes you get something very, you'll get something last minute that somebody wants to put up on the board. Oh, it's in, it, the more prep work that you can do for before an event, uh, the smoother your operation will go. Okay, that's a good lead in. So we have a bunch of students that we want to be able to work in this. Do we have to have this all set up down here? This is the only place they could ever edit, or, or is there some way to allow or work in with this, this setup and so kids can build stuff in, in a classroom environment, so or is there? It would be something we would need to um, interface with your IT department okay. in terms of remotely accessing the, the system. Um, I know uh, most of your schools are uh, primarily Mac schools, correct? Right. So you, there's a built-in uh, there's a built-in system called a screen share uh, that's available through in the Mac ecosystem. It just it's a matter of uh, of checking with, of touching base with your IT department to make sure it's okay to have that communication occurring, or if okay. it's from a particular computer or laptop that that happens. Um, otherwise, it would be having the system set up and then right. manipulating. Okay. But you could work on this system without the board. Like we could plug this system in at our office and play just from that, right, without oh, it being connected to the scoreboard? So the, um, in terms of the, that's actually a good, that's actually a great lead into the kind of how this is physically set up. Um, what you have is you have two um, extenders, and what these are doing is they're basically doing a direct line to the system that's, uh, that's in the back locker room. Okay. It's not, uh, this isn't on the, it's a, not, this is not networked, this is just a direct connection uh, for both of these, uh, what you'll see is these, extender boxes and that's your USB your HDMI and it's a matter of you'll have a jack um, in your facility one of them will be for your vmix system one of them will be for your scoreboard system and you just plug in that that cable and it powers this device and also allows you to do your mouse keyboards and monitor um, but yeah so this box is portable to another place in the facility it's specific to this location. <laughs> Any other questions regarding uh, the graphics area in terms of changing how those items scale? <coughs> okay. I just need a break. Um, so that's actually um, all of the. That's kind of the, uh, uh, the scoreboard system in terms of the content aspect of it. Um, if we want to take a, a five to 10 minute break, um, we'll do that. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to come down we'll dis and we can discuss and you can want to have your hands on it and click on some things, absolutely. But then we'll be back uh, back here at nine. And then, oh, sorry, uh, yes, at nine. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of go over the uh, score console system. Okay. Great. Huh? I'm so excited. I immediately put it in my bag. I didn't let Beth or Nina see it. I was like, I'm bringing it to work. Desktop For your main scoreboard connection, you go um, from the scoreboard. To this RJ40, to this uh, Ethernet cable, and that goes down to an adapter here. You can see that goes from this RJ45 
to uh, to USB, and then that just plugs into the scoreboard <laughs> KBM extension. So that's just your score console cable plugs into one of the to the USB port on the scoring system, and that's how it that's how it communicates. And once everything's connected up, Chickens. then you can start. Uh, then you can open up the uh, software. <laughs> any uh, any questions about the physical uh, the physical connections? Do you have? Those labels on the back. What we're doing, we're doing the process. We're going through the process yeah, of labeling stuff. Like that. <laughs> yes. So you've got, um, so you've got scoreboard, yeah. scoreboard on the back here, and then auxiliary here as well. And then what we'll do is we can actually we'll add uh, we'll add labels on here as well. Correct. And what we'll do is we're kind of. Um, in a second here, we'll go through in terms of powering these guys up and how to select them for you. Um, so, to turn, you, to turn these consoles off, it's just holding the power, turning it off, pressing and holding. And they do have a, they do have a battery backup in it, so in case something, if it gets unplugged, it'll still stay on. So on the consoles, what you'll do is you'll uh, turn on the primary console first. Just press and hold the power, and then for the main for the main console, you'll say uh, it'll come up with a menu that says one or two. You select that menu. Um, if you're using the same setup as last time, you can say yes. So what it is typically on the system, it's a yes no button and an enter button. That's primarily how you go through setting things up. So in this case. Let's say for now we'll say no, we're going to do a new something, something new. Uh, since there's no uh, wireless scoreboard, you can just go ahead and hit enter. You'll come up with a list of sports. So what you would do, uh, typically in this scenario, you do basketball or volleyball. So that, and it's indicated by a number. So you just hit that number, and then it pulls up that basketball scoreboard, or the basketball layout. Then you power up your stats console. Is there a way to have, like sometimes we have tournaments, so we have both scoreboards running, but two different, like, no. games Can't do that. going mm -hmm. on? So you, it would be a matter of setting up uh, you could, any of the fields in the system. So like say you wanted to have uh, um, one team, be, there's not a multi-team function in the, system, in the software, but what you can do is you can open up a sport and say, fouls is going to be for this team, uh, uh, this, these two teams, um, and then a uh, score is going to be for these two teams. And you just need to be aware of how you're scoring the game. Because at the end of the day, you just change what it says on the scoreboard. Because you're just putting in a number. And then it just displays how you want it to play. So like wrestling, you have two maps. That one scored there. This one scored there. Here. No, we so, can't. But that's back in the program. But Oak Park can do that. Because we have. Yeah. So and, and again, that has to be, um, and that would still be. But that's like one person scoring two maps at the same time. Correct. That might be Correct. too confusing. I mean, there's uh, ways to potentially address that, but that's how uh, that's how the system works. It's not designed for multiple events, but there's ways to score multiple. <coughs> um, so for, on the second console, you power that up. Uh, for step for doing uh, player foul points. If you're not doing player foul points, you don't have to worry about setting this console up. So if, let's say if it's a JV game, and that's not going to be something that's part of that game, you don't have to set this console up. Um, you turn this, but you, when you turn it on, it'll ask: Do you want it to be a scoreboard, or do you want it to be a stat panel? And it has a number value. Again, in this case, instead of one, we'll be hitting two.
So, uh, you always want to make sure that you start up your stat throw. console first. <laughs> um, it'll ask you once you hit the two for stats, if you want to use two consoles. In this case, we're going to say yes. And then hit enter. And then we'll go again and select basketball. And so then it'll say stats assist, and that's how you know that you're up and ready to go. Then we'll turn on the primary console, select scoreboard. And then select a basket. So now you have this set up in stats assist mode and back into the score. Uh, again, if you're not doing player foul points, you won't need this console. You just need the one. Uh, once this is set up, in the uh, scoreboard system, you'll actually see a green icon across the top of the system. That green icon lets you know that it's being controlled by the console. The way to make sure that it's still that it's communicating is if you uh, manipulate any of these scores, what you'll notice. You can actually see up on the boards, it briefly goes, it changes score and then goes back. That lets you know that this console is communicating to it. Um, each of these consoles has slip sheets. That just easily slides in and out. So if you need to switch it between volleyball and basketball, you can. And then the slip sheet will correspond here. Um, and then uh, once the slip sheet is in, then you just, it's a matter of following the slip sheet to add information to it. If you have the stat panel up, anytime you press a uh, point up, it'll actually ask you which player number for that, for that uh, information. So in the case, if you're running player file point, to put people into the game, you'll go player in and out. So in this case, you put the first player's number in, the second one, and so forth. And you're placing, you press uh, <clears throat> the player number, and then you press enter until you get to the last player, and you press enter twice. And now those players are into the game. And the same thing for players in on the guest side. You place that number in. And it's uh, <coughs> one player, then enter, the next player, then enter, the next player, then enter, and then when you get to the last one, you hit enter twice. And again, it then updates on the board. So if you needed to sub out a player, it's player in or out, you put the player who's coming in, so let's say player uh, 12 is going to come in on the guest side, and he's going to um, take the place of player 5. So you put a player in, 12, player out, 5. And now you can see on the uh, guest side, that player has been subbed in. And if they had stats prior to coming in or out, or did they automatically come back up? Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. The, the console will save, uh, save that player's information as they come in and out of the game. And again, if you're not doing uh, player file points, this console would be off. You won't have to, uh, to worry about the points. Um, and in the case here, It's basic, it's very much as you kind of see it. So you have, uh, for time, there's two ways to control time. Uh, you have the start and stop button in the corner that starts the clock. You also have a plunger that screws in to the back of the console. Uh, that plunger also allows you to have a separate start and stop for the time. And it's just a press on, press on for the start. And for timeouts and fouls, you have all the kind of your buttons here for plus one for fouls, plus one, and you can also have your edit time. So the time always has to be stopped. So let's say you needed to add 10 seconds to the clock, you would have to hit, make sure the clock is stopped running, and then edit time, and then enter in that time. Um, the same thing if uh, the score, if you need to change the score, there's an edit score button. Uh, and from basically each element of the console, there's an edit button that corresponds to that function. So if you need to, so if you needed to change the score or you needed to change the total foul number, that's something that you could do as well. Um, any questions uh, in terms of uh, the console and how they operate? The plunger, the only way to use plunger it has, you have to have that. Device out, you can't buy that. So you lunge over here, use the lunge connected. 
Uh, no, the plunger, the plunger is connected to the console. So, and again, this, the two ways to do time, there's a start and stop button on the console itself, and also the plunger as well. It's just on personal preference whether you want to use the plunger or whether you want to use the start and stop on the console itself. Can get a new name? Um, any other questions uh, regarding the console? It's uh, once you get your hands on it, it's fairly straightforward. It's just a matter of uh, um, sitting in front of it. It's the slip sheets actually do a good job of kind of showing you where all of the elements uh, for the console are, whether it be uh, you know, possession, which you can see manipulating up there, or adding points. Um, if there are any questions about the uh, console, uh, what we'll do is we'll move over um, uh, to the uh, vMix system. So that's uh, and what the vMix does is that allows you to have um, your live video input coming into the system. It has four video inputs. It also has a hard drive that allows you to record a game and uh, do instant replay as well. So we'll kind of start going through that. Uh, what I've done is I've added a couple of uh, video files to the system just so we can get an idea of what it would look like if you had cameras. Uh, so, uh, for starting up the software, it is an icon. It's a, it's a series of squares um, on the system. It's just basically a box of blue, little tiny blue squares. You would click that open, and then once you have the software open, you go to open again, and then you select your show setup. Um, that file is the one that allows you to say, let's say you have two cameras for a game and you don't have all of your cameras, you can have different setups for different uh, events. Or in the case of you end up doing a website inside the system, that would be, yeah, that would be where you could uh, go through. <coughs> so once you hit that open again, you know, you'll open, it'll ask you, do you want, is, is this how you wanted to lay it out? You just hit open again. And it'll pull everything up. Um, uh, really, uh, uh, for the VMIX system, it's a matter of adding your inputs. Uh, typically, these should already be added uh, added <coughs> to your previous setup, but if you needed to add an additional one, it's in the bottom left-hand corner. You're at, uh, you add your input, uh, and typically it would be a camera. You go add input, go to camera, select which port on the system your camera's coming in from. In this case, it's, it's, uh, and then you would hit OK. Um, in this case, what I've done is I've added a couple of video files as inputs. And you can do that as well. You just go to video, you choose browse, and then select the file from your hard drive. Um, and again, if you needed to load a file onto the vMix, uh, uh, you would do uh, the same thing. You have a USB access point here, so you can have your file on a thumb drive, and then load that in. The key for vMix is that you have a preview window, a preview window, and a program window. Uh, what's on the left is what's about to come up, and what's on the right is what's currently playing. So if I go over here and choose uh, choose live. Oh, when you open up your software, uh, before you actually are outputting content to the board, you have to hit external. That'll turn red. And that'll be sending video out to the next to the system. So now, uh, what, uh, now that I've uh, turned on the live uh, input on the scoreboard, whatever is here is in the right-hand side of my program window. That's actually going to be what displays out on the board. Um, across the middle, you have a tr uh, series of transition elements. Uh, more often than not, uh, the quick play at the top will typically uh, be fine for transitioning back and forth <coughs> between those elements. Did you have a delay on that, or was that instant? Quick play? 
Yeah, so the quick play, it'll change your program right away. Okay. Um, to change what's going in your preview, you then select a different I uh, element down here. So as I click through these different icons, mm -hmm. it changes what goes into the preview. preview. Yeah. So if I wanted to, though, you have a little quick play button on the tiles. So if I hit quick play from there, it can go ahead. So if I needed to get something up on the board really quick, that's one way to do it. Of there Typically, quick. you'd be sitting right here and hitting quick play. You also have what's called a uh, T-bar, and that allows you if you wanted to do a custom transition between the two elements. So if you want to do something like a slow Right, transition, okay, there you go. There you you go. have the ability to do that as well. That's what I was talking about. Um, nice smooth transition. For, uh, for instant like replay, again, uh, well, sorry. Any questions about uh, the preview versus the program and adding a uh, camera input? Uh, one thing to note about your camera inputs, uh, we typically we have the system set for uh, a certain resolution that happens to be 720p60. You want to make sure that all of your equipment and cameras, if you're doing instant replay, are set to the same same value. Uh, when the system records, it wants everything to be the same uh, resolution. Uh, we typically use 720p60, and just because it ends up being a, uh, with the 60 frames per second, it ends up being a more stable signal. When you're in the we have to back for the rack and the four inch Yes. Yes. And you're at, um, with, a, with an SDI cable, you can uh, uh, you get a, a hundred, uh, you get a three hundred feet of cable okay. from from back there. Okay. And if you wanted to go beyond that, then you would have to have a feed set out here or yeah, or a wireless. Correct. But even the concrete, the wireless. And what you can do is you can run, if you were doing a wireless setup, you yes. run your cable to a certain area in the, uh, that's fairly close, yeah. and then you would put your wireless transmitter in the actual gymnasium. Okay. Is what you would do. And then the cable would Because that way you're not trying to go through the concrete back to the system. So, so we would connect it, cable it, cable it, connect it to one of those D boxes right there, our wireless system? So the, no, so your wireless system, every, all of your inputs are back in the rack. <coughs> There's a computer that's actually sitting in a uh, in a uh, in a rack uh -huh. that has SDI inputs. All of your camera inputs have to go into that system. That's in Major's office back. Um, okay. So, so now your video inputs do not come into play on any of these devices. These are exclusively just for your controls. The controls. You be prepared. So uh, for uh, instant replay, again, that's just adding an input. Going to instant, uh, and on this list, going to instant replay. And then from there, uh, going through uh, and, and selecting which cameras you want to have in your instant replay. Uh, from here, you would also be able to set uh, your resolution and where those instant replays are going in terms of where they're being recorded on the computer. Uh, we have a, a, a solid uh, a hard drive on there specifically for instant replay. Now for uh, instant replay, uh, typically you have a uh, preview here. Oh. On the instant replay, it will give you basically two windows. So you have two primary cameras that you would be looking at. Um, you can always have it to do more. Um, on the instant replay section, you have uh, a little quick button of minus 5, minus 10. So that would be 5 seconds in the past, 10 seconds in the past, and then a quick play button. <coughs> the last kind of element of this dock is a slider bar. That slider bar lets you control how fast or slow it plays back. So if I wanted to say, um, I wanted to replay the spin around the Statue of Liberty, yes. I would just hit the minus five seconds, and then I would hit the play, I would hit play last. Ow. I have to hit the minus five though. What's that? And then, so I hit minus 10. Play last, so then, if I pull that slider down, it becomes, it puts it in slow motion, and then I can put it back to normal time. 
or again, then put it back. So it would replay the last five seconds or, or ten, ten seconds. Um, Only over here on the right, on the you have a, a tab that says Instant Replay. It allows you to open up some more controls and also get access to your replay events. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have um, a series of uh, uh, plays and events that you wanted to, and you wanted to create a playlist. Say, let's say during halftime, you wanted to do highlights for the for uh, for the first half. Um, you can set these into uh, one of these tabs by just right clicking. Moving it to one of those areas. And then you basically have created a playlist. Down in the bottom, you then have the ability to um, uh, play those events back. And again, you have uh, the ability to control and manipulate how fast that goes. Um, again, over here in the dock, you also have the ability to control, you have quick buttons for changing speed as well. Um, any question? Uh, so any, this clips like when you say the last five. So whatever was playing on the camera, it only clips that last five seconds or the last ten seconds. It goes five seconds in the past. Okay. And then just uh, and then and it that, plays. And it holds it. Okay. Correct. Oh uh, yeah, you have five, ten. Yeah, five, ten, and then in the big and then in the uh, larger window for your instant replay, you also have access to a minus twenty. Typically, in most sporting events. Uh, uh, minus 10 and minus 5 will get you to where most times you need. Unless there was a very long play, then you have your minus 10. Um, you also have the ability to go in and actually set uh, and change the, and manipulate your in and out. So let's say you get close, say minus 5 is okay. Well, you can go in and where it says the time code, you can go in and, and change that time back. So you can say, oh, I need, to, I almost got it. But it's, I need to go a little bit further back to get it. You can manipulate that from there. So is it like just double clicking on it? And it's, that? So the, to manipulate the time, you hover over the time. It'll create an icon for you. And then you can slide that icon uh, back and forth to change that to change where it comes up. Oh, that'd be fine. Any questions about uh, the instant uh, the instant replay in terms of uh, or of uh, adding a camera to the system? Uh, really, uh, the VMix has a lot of power to it, but in terms of your live video instant replay, uh, the system is actually uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, it's uh, a lot of times just getting some hands on with it. Will, uh, help. So again, uh, for uh, enabling your external output, that's the red external here. And that's what, again, what allows you to have the video um, up here. What I'd like, if there's no uh, questions about the, the um, vMix system, um, what I'd like to do is, if you want to have time to come down and uh, manipulate the console or go through on vmix a little bit again vmix will be a little bit limited in this demonstration since we don't have a, a live camera uh, hooked up um, uh, or if you want to, to adjust if someone wants to come down and uh, manipulate the scoreboard system that's actually kind of the overview of the this control system can he use uh, the camera with an sdi do they have a camera with an sdi <laughs> <laughs> I, I would <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, well, it's it's. So you would, you would have uh, you well, have one we're live. I mean, content, <laughs> but I don't want. But you're not. And one he doesn't have a Wi-Fi signal to stream. Yeah, you do. He does. Oh, well, yeah. ten, give it to me. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Don't you have a Wi-Fi signal for this? Is this Wi-Fi? No. Oh, it's not. Okay. Oh. Well, these are connected to. They're connected. Um, they're in that rack connected to the uh, Wi-Fi, the guest Wi-Fi, and that's how we're commuting. We're able to come in, uh, in for remote support. So this is a crazy question, but are any one of those inputs able to connect to the internet? Can you pull anything from the internet? So this system is online. There you see. That's a good point. 
That's what I'm talking about. So when you add an input, you can also add, you can add a website. I would say typically the more animations, live videos, that kind of thing on a website, the less likely that it is to actually to play on there. Can it, you specifically Flash? It doesn't really have a Flash player in it, uh -huh. but anything that's uh, um, to get not to get too uh, specific. YouTube. Uh, YouTube would work because it's HTML5. Anything. Go, that, go ahead and punch that up there. <laughs> well, are you live streaming? Yeah. See that's if what you I'm can saying. find your live stream. That's, yeah. what, that's what I'm trying to get to. What's your web address? Yeah. You don't need Danny. Which one? <laughs> oh. Professional. 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 Into sports talk. <laughs> Into sports talk. <laughs> Into sports talk. You laugh. I told you I want to live stream. So you broadcast on YouTube now? Yes. Okay. So you're trying to pull that up here. You wanted to come down. You want to? It's right. It's He's right there. Where? Keep. Uh, no. No. No, 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 no. Uh, all one word. Into sports talk. All one word. That one. And then it's live right now. There you, there you are. <laughs> so it's a short delay because it's not. I have it on a 10 second delay. <laughs> In case somebody says Big Daddy or something. Just the Yeah. 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 Stream it. Uh, next week we're doing we're doing wrestling. Okay. So, 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 to, so to add the video input, I hit add input. Then I went to uh, a website. Web browser. Yeah. And then uh, what I always do is I typically will navigate to the web page that I want and then go to that URL and then uh, copy that URL. He can change it right now. Here. But see, you don't have to know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 SB, now you gotta be careful. It puts it in a zone. Oh, give me a. Hey, just leave that up the rest of the time so that people can see what he's doing that aren't sitting right here. They can't see what on the screen. No, more of a one up on the echo. Oh, my God. Ha 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 how long is it? It's not up there, it's, though. It's, it's a 10 delay. second delay. Hold on. Hold on. Selfie cam. This is a live stream. It's going to be a 10 second delay. Right. Second. right. So just yeah, wait a second. It, it does feel like more. Yeah. Yeah. It probably is. Just count. Just count. Just count. After that. He's got a delay. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, wait for it. It's coming. Did you cut? There it is. I'm <laughs> <laughs> trying to block you, that's what I'm trying to Well, he has it on delay. He has it on delay here. Not, yeah. YouTube delays it. So it's probably like 15 hours. <laughs> so tomorrow, it'll, it'll be up here. You'll see it. <laughs> if it's just a uh, website with some graphics on it, that's generally okay. okay. Oh. Uh, so, the, uh, so the question was, uh, what's the difference between adding a website on here and adding a website on here? Uh, the scoreboard system, its web browser is somewhat limited. Uh, if it's just straight uh, numbers kind of information, that's typically fine. But if, as soon as you start getting into a website that has a video stream or any animated elements, you would want to open it into the vMix system. So let me ask this. Beginning of the year, the principal wants to have uh, another <coughs> school seminar. He wants to show his PowerPoint or whatever up there. Is it better for him to plug his computer into the back of the video and bring it through? Yes, absolutely. So that's the best way for him to do the other one, oh, it, 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 it just like the Prince presentation, not um, overly complex. What? You can export a uh, PowerPoint still and then have it in that way. But if it's if there's a computer level live video input, I would say that's probably more important. But it can also be streamed, and then you can load up from your phone. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the Prince presentation. Yeah, but you have to have a TV. 
can't. But yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Oh, is that your yes. <laughs> Oh, a good question was, do you need the uh, Phoenix system in order to uh, 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 scoreboard up in order to have VMIX go to the scoreboard? And the answer is yes. So VMIX, uh, the scoreboard system is what allows you to take in content, whether it be VMIX or graphics, and put it up on the board. So even for live video, uh, uh, if you're just using VMIX, you can still have the scoreboard up, and then you would put that video up. So I want to do it's too but I mean, too. Well, she saw it for you. Mm -hmm. Easier for you. Yes. So what we'll do is, uh, uh, if you're here, yeah. it'd be easier for me to go to the car. And add a video element. Oh, that's the whole thing. Oh, that's the whole thing. Oh, that's the whole yeah, I mean, you can shoot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not still here for you to win. I'm not exactly sure when he, like, yeah. submitted the order. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. He just come in and get to my post. Yeah. But I'm going to be on the board. That part is on there. That's the door. My client can write down my stuff. Yeah. So when you do that, you can add a text element. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He did, like, really on top of stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so track wrestling. So um, potentially what can be done is your VMIX system can load your track wrestling website and then display that on the system. Um, what we would, what you would want to probably test is there's the ability to add that as an element bit. to an overlay, um, but you would want to load it into the scoreboard software first to see if the scoreboard software is able to pull it up properly. Um, but uh, that's one way if you wanted to have uh, some of your wrestling stats displayed. That would be a, a potential avenue to do that, is to add that website as an input as we've added this uh, uh, streaming website, and then send that as a video input uh, to your scoring system. So that's just kind of some of the discussion that was going on here regarding uh, some uh, wrestling, uh, some of your wrestling uh, scoring. Um, is that yeah. that yeah. It's not a matter of getting the URL now. Correct. And so, and when you're, anytime you're adding a, a website in vMix, what I will typically do is open up the website first on the browser, uh, navigate to the web page, and then copy and paste that link, rather than trying to go just through the uh, system itself. It's a little bit more cumbersome. Though. So it's a little bit easier if you go if you get your right URL first and then look at it. Does Formetco own your pro presenter? No. Okay. So it is a, its own entity. Correct. Correct. It's a your software. Well, that, that would all be dependent on potential for like an Apple TV being able to wirelessly stream the Apple TV, which would then come back into this, come to this, which would go to that. Making all that work is, yeah. Uh, but, but we have the man that can do that. There's the possibility, like you said, because track wrestling is virtually, what, what they want to display is virtually just text. There's no graphics, it's just text, it's words. You potentially could do it right here, straight from here to track. You don't need that, you don't need another Mac, you can use everything right here. To do it potentially, yeah, we just because have, you know, it's just text that you're showing. Yeah, you just need to load the website, see if the software is uh, software is okay with that website. Just so scoreboard. what I'm looking at is maybe load the software twice. Two tabs of track wrestling. Go to the on deck for this gym, and then the other one on deck for that gym. Split your screen with zones, and I have and I this is on deck, on the ox gym on deck. Both showing you here. So go to the go. Grab a kid over there. That's what I'm saying. Can we get a school pool? Then, the finals, you take this, and there's YouTube display, and he's got delay on it to take the delay off of it. No sound. They're recording the championship. Boom. Championship matches. And we just need to make sure when we do that, like the ad zones stay up. Like you get the middle section. Right, well, in the ad zones, you could, or in the ad zones, you could put what we have. No, we have contractual obligations. Oh, yeah, ad zones. Okay, that's right. We've signed contracts. Yes. Well, you can do it at the bottom. For every event. You can do it in the bottom part. Yes. In the bottom. That's how we're on the papers. Yeah. I should know for every event, it has to be up there. Didn't do full screen, but you can get close. No, you wouldn't have the scoreboard. No, right. the scoreboard. Right. So you could run so your ads to the bottom and go to the 69th. We actually we got the and, um, and how long mm -hmm. is it? Well, it is a bit of a And they can rotate. We can put the ads wherever we want. it is a bit of at all times. Um, and that's um, uh, one thing we did every day. Kind of a more uh, Here is the American flag as you do the national anthem. And and why don't you go to Zach? Well, no, same time. Just mm -hmm. She's she's running track. Oh. She's gonna do it. Oh, it's time to go. Pittsburgh, Virginia, Max, represent now.
Space age. Astro world. Space age. You got a chain on there. We're right here. What are you going to do? You get it out of the bubble. Yeah. Where do you edit it? So tiny. You can edit it. You can edit it. That one will be. Just but actually, do it on a right there. Like no, right there on that screen on the right side, you can click the bar. Yeah, and just type in there and delete it and change it. Oh, or you can do it on a That would change the template. This changes the temporary. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You don't want to mess with the templates at all. It's been all possible. Yeah. Huh? Yep. Yep. Click on visitor. You think about calling Malibu, you know that double. I saw him for the rest of the whole year long. I would call him Malibu. Now, click enter. See what happens. There what? Oh, so coach. You know what? What's the call? You hear me? One other thing. He's had a look. Oh. He's had a look. Oh. He's just highlighting that area, typing in the name, and then hitting enter. Making sure it's spelled correct. Uh, if you have it all capitals here, it will be capitalized up there. If you type it in lowercase, it will be capital in lowercase. He said Max who? He's trying to change it. That's you. That's you. Oh, yeah. We own that. That's most right there. That's most. That's most. Who am I? Who am I? Right there. That's you right there. Yeah, all right. I know it. Max. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me that ain't you. <laughs> you can't tell me that ain't you. They did it last night. They ran our game without the console last night. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just a freshman. Like, I don't know yeah. what I did. What do you mean, just? <laughs> yeah. Pardon yeah. me. Just. Why did you throw just? Gonna, <laughs> why, why couldn't you just say I it was a freshman game? Just. I misspoke. <laughs> you might want to say it. I know, I need to. I need new friends. I meant to say simply. <laughs> <laughs> go back hey, to, uh, just go back to Jeff. Speaking of our game, I was like, who was that lady that kept my book? <laughs> I know she said she knew my name. And I think it was the volleyball coach that I tried to have fired in, in, in middle school. She, she tried to tell me that I couldn't play basketball. And my grandpa was really good friends with Spots, who was the man at the time at the central office. And he called him and was like, hey. So she had to come just to look apologize to me and tell me I could come to practice that day. <laughs> Because another girl in volleyball gave her a book at the end, like you know you give coaches gifts at the end. It was like how to coach volleyball for dummies, and she thought it was me, and it wasn't me. It was somebody else, but she thought it was me. What do you put on that? It was great. It's like that, huh? Well, we got memes now. We on a meme war? You all want to go on a meme war? Okay. Do you want me to look you up? No. No. Yeah, we can't set them. We can't set them. Don't do it. I guess it's just a matter of playing with it. You don't want to go to eighth grade. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Where's the rest going? All right. All right. Don't worry about it. We're just having a meeting. Don't worry about it. <laughs>